shellers. Welcome to another episode on the Virtual Shelling Network. We're here at Alger's Beach on Sanibel. So this is not a beach that I come to very often. Um, it's usually kind of crowded. Um, it's a popular beach for people who visit. It is a little breezy out here today. We're getting ready for sunset in a little while, but wanted to come check out the beach. Um, and it's like cockle city out here. Look at all of the giant heart cockles that are here that have washed up. So you guys know that um, in previous videos when we've had wash ups like this, a lot of times there are still critters in the cockles and you don't wanna take them because they're super smelly and stinky and gross. But these have all been cleaned out by birds or um, by bugs. And so we are gonna be collecting some of these awesome giant heart cockles um, today. And I, I do send out quite a few of these in the beach treasure boxes. I know that they're a fan favorite. They're just, they're big shells. They're fun to use as decor, to paint, to use as little bowls for your minis and tinies. Um, so we are gonna go and check out the beach and collect some of these um, awesome cockles. Are you ready to go and check out all this good stuff? All right, let's go. All right, guys, so we're gonna come and head down here by the water really quick, um, and then we're gonna check out the higher rock line. So um, it's not really high or low tide right now. I think low tide was this early this morning, and then high tide is late tonight, and we had to um, change tides, one change tide today. And the water's a little bit murky here, so there's not a lot to see in the brake line. Um, it's just a little bit wavy and a little bit cloudy of the water. Um, otherwise, I think the brake line would probably be great shelling. Let me see if I can come down here wait till the waves calm. Oh, that water's really, really cold. Yeah, we're not going to be able to really see a whole lot. I can see a conch here. If you guys will have a chance to see it. It's kind of a big fighting conch up there. Um, but yeah, just a little bit too wavy and cloudy. Birds, seagulls. Seagulls are probably having a field day with all of these shells um, washing up. So we're just gonna take a look at the brake line here and see if we see anything um, interesting. Lots of seaweed has washed up. I'm not really seeing um, a whole lot of treasure type things here. Like, like this type of seaweed is usually just kind of like the seagrass type seaweed. So I don't usually find a whole lot in here. There's a cool little piece of that tide. It's a cute little drill. Here. So a lot of times I just like to kind of walk the beach a little bit a little bit quickly especially when the tide's coming in because we're gonna lose this um this rack line pretty soon but just to see if anything catches my eye um this would be a great place to you know get down if you have a a scooper or a digger and go ahead and kind of dig through some of these little piles to see if there's anything underneath so there's a little conch oh he's got a little critter in there do you see him Another one. Oh, he's got to remember to check our shells carefully. It's a pretty little scallop right here. Here and then 
if we come up here, look at all of the crazy cockle shells. Holy moly. I mean, there's just, I don't know if I've ever seen so many cockle shells ever. At least not empty. I will say that I have seen wash-ups with full cockles before. But this is quite a treat to have all of these intact bivalves already cleaned out for us. That is pretty awesome. And sometimes as you're looking in all of this kind of, you know how I call it, beach, beach garbage, beach trash, beach bling, maybe beach bling is a better term, you will find sometimes some sea whips. So here's a sea whip. Um, see if I can get that off there. Attached to some seaweed. So here's a little sea whip here. And then it looks like there's another one entangled here. So here's another one. And then I see a strand of purple. So let's see if we can find the end of it. This. Oh, I might need two hands for this one. Let's see. Okay, so it was just a piece of one, just a piece of the purple sea whip. Um, but here's two cute ones that I will get all cleaned up. Those are really super fun. And sea whips are something that I feel like some, sometimes people just have an eye for them. Like for me, like they just stick out. They just stick out for me. Um, and these ones don't have the purple on any longer, but they are still sea whips. And I just think that they're so fun. So here, looks like another one right here. Sometimes they're like tangled up in all of this stuff. Oh, I might need two hands here. Let's see. I can. If you can find the stem right here, I call it like the little root system part of it, and pull, then it usually will come off of whatever it's stuck to a lot easier. There we go, like that. So there's another one, and then it looks like there's one right here too. It's a little baby one. All right, let's see what else we can find here. If we see any other sea whips or any other fun. Is this a piece of sponge? Yeah, so this is a piece of sponge. So this sponge was originally orange. I don't know if you guys will be able to tell, but as they dry out, they turn kind of brown and lose their color. Um, and they get very stinky. So everybody sees this like bright orange sponge. Here's another little sponge. And then they want to take it home, but it hasn't dried out yet. So these sponges here, I think are really fun. And usually they don't smell too bad once they get dried out. Try to focus in a little bit there. But these are really kind of cool to put in a little shell display or even to paint them. You can spray paint them fun little colors. Here's another little sea whip here. And sea whips are fun too. I mean, some people like to use them on like canvas, kind of as like 3D art. Um, other people will put them in like a shell display, which is really fun. Here's a cool little piece of driftwood too. That's kind of fun. So when I'm looking for sea whips, I am looking for a lot of the time purple. And if you guys can see, I'll see if you guys can see it. I'll give you a minute. I can see just a little bit of purple right there in the middle. So that is where I will see right here. You kind of have to be careful because as you're pulling them out, you don't want to break off the ends of them. They're usually pretty sturdy. So, so you can see the little bit of purple right at the top there. Try to focus right here. It's hard to focus because it's like wanting to focus behind it. But So there's a little bit of purple. 
And then here we see a lot of purple. So this is probably gonna be a really cool one. You guys see up, see all the purple here? So let's see if I can, I need like, hold on, I need a third hand. Okay, there we go. Look how pretty this one is, you guys. This is gorgeous and it's still got a lot of the purple on it. It's so pretty. Look how nice that is. So I will tell you, um, be careful if you put these in your shell bag because if you put them in this way, when you pull them out, some of these will get caught on the sides of your bag and it might damage them. So I try to lay it in my shell bag like that or I put it in upside down. So that way when I pull it out, all of the little spines are facing down and it doesn't break them off. All right, let's see what else we can find. I always like to check um, for driftwood too. We do not find driftwood often on Sanibel. So when we have wash-ups like this, this is sometimes a really great time to pick out some fun um, driftwood. So I'm always keeping my eyes out. Like here's like a little piece right here. See, just like a little piece like that. I love that. I love putting those in shell bowls um, just as decor. It's so fun. Hopefully it's not too windy for you guys. It's a little bit breezy. Here's a little flame box crab shell here. So really pretty, super fragile. So, and this is like actually kind of perfect because you can find a cockle shell that is intact. Any bivalve will work, but you wanna make sure that it's all cleaned out, okay? And then that one actually is a little bit of overkill for this crab shell. It really doesn't need to be quite that big, but you stick in your crab shell like that and then you close it and now you have a little box or a little container and you can put that in the bottom of your shell bag. And then when you get home, I don't ever dump out my shell bags. I hand take everything out and that way your crab shell will be um, good when you get back. Now, I was just seeing here, I don't know if you guys will be able to see right here on the edge where my pinky is, there's a little crack. Can you see the crack right here, right there? So this, this is probably not gonna make it. And if it did make it home, um, you would have to really seal that well with like some Elmer's glue to make sure it didn't crack further. So we'll try to take it home and see if it lasts. Um, but you just want to make sure that you know that if they are cracked in advance, it just really weakens that, that shell and they can break very, very easily. Same thing with sand dollars. Once the shell is cracked, even, even if it's just a hairline little fracture there, um, it can really disrupt the integrity of the whole shell. Here's some cool pieces of driftwood here. Oh, I love these big chunky pieces. If these are here on the way back. I'm gonna grab them. I try not to put too big of things in my shell bag because I feel like it just takes up a lot of space. Here's a cute little piece of driftwood. Look how cute this one is. That would be cute in like a bowl of like minis or tinies. There's a little egg casing here, hanging on to, I don't know what it's hanging on to, but this is a, looks like a banded tulip egg casing. So that's where little baby shells come from, and here we've got a scallop, intact scallop, so I always want to make sure that all of the critter is out of these. So you can see with the calico scallops, one side is usually like a plain or light or white to side. And then the other side is gonna be your more colorful or darker side. So that is a really cool little find there. Looks like two sea whips. Can you guys see the two ends here? always get all tangled up. Um, this one looks like a little, almost like a little sea tree, I like to call them. They're, they're kind of brown. They're not, I don't know if they're actually technically sea whips or not. Here, I'll break these apart. 
So here are your two sea whips. This is a sea whip. It was just covered in some, some seaweed fuzzy stuff. But this is what they look like now that they're all cleaned up. And then we have another one right here. It's really pretty. It's like a long one. I'm trying to get the seaweed, seaweed off of it. Look how pretty. I love them. Seagulls out here today. Um, as I was walking towards the water, this beautiful yellow sea whip caught my eye. Look how pretty this one is. I love the yellow ones. We hardly ever find them here. I've only found a couple ever, and I just think they're so pretty. Isn't that beautiful? There's a little bit of a wash up here. Here's um, an example of that orange sponge that unfortunately will not stay that way. Let's see what else we have. Something good over here. Here's one of the um, cockles with the critter still in there. It's no longer alive, but there is still remnants. And here's a little sea urchin here. you guys a view of the beach oh my gosh it's so pretty out here this evening lots to look at lots of birds they're having a field day with all of the um with all of the shells that are washing up it's like a sushi buffet for them they just love to eat all the seafood i'm sure a lot of you guys like seafood too so this is uh quite a treat for the birds Pretty little scallop here. A couple more cockles washing up. Here's a whelk. Looks like a little good place for minis and tinies now that I'm getting down and looking so if you guys can see like how there's um there's like bigger shells here and then there's like a little rack line of itty bitty stuff and you can see some of the like coffee grounds as we call them um, so usually if you get down and you look close you'll be able to maybe see some minis and tinies so here's like a little Looks like broken, but a little piece of a um, juvenile baby conk. Another little coquina, a couple coquinas. Oh, and look, do you guys see the limpet? Look at the little limpet right here. Look how cute. I think it's broken a little bit. There's a little limpet or a hat, as sometimes they are called. But that's another just example of getting down and checking out that kind of mini rack line. the little baby shells kind of get get stuck up here and you'll be able to find um, some minis and tinies. Ooh, all kinds of shells are washing in. There's a little murex here. Pretty. Lots of cockles. Here's another sea whip that's coming in. A little piece of driftwood. Here's a little conk. Oh, nobody home in this one, so that's good. And here's a little broken piece of a shark eye here. Here. Oh, 
here's a really pretty scallop with a little barnacle. You guys know I like the little barnacle scallops. Here's a little conch I almost stepped on. come in so many different sizes and colors. Here's a little conch here. Oop, there's a little critter in there. You guys see his little eyeball? Little eyeballs there. So we'll let him go back into the water. here and see what else we can find. This is a cool piece of driftwood. Look at that. That's really fun. Oh, I love that one. Lots of sea whips. Usually we do not find a lot of sea whips. So when they're here, I love to take advantage. Oops, that's not a sea whip. That's a piece of plastic. Take that with us here. But look how pretty that one is. Gorgeous. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. There's two. There's a little baby one here. And then we have one. Oh, a big one. Here. You can kind of see this is similar to that purple one that we found earlier. But this one is losing its purple. And it can come off when the sea whip dies. Kind of like leaves on a tree, right? But you can see it still kind of has some purple right up here. So that's really pretty. Put both of those in our bag. Hello. And here's another little egg casing. A little um, banded tulip. So let's see. So this one did not hatch. Yes, it did. Okay, here's a couple try to move this over it's dried out a little bit so can you guys see that little hole right there and there's a little hole here so some of these hatched which is good but the ones in the middle here right here can you guys see right there there's still little baby shells in there so those did not hatch so this is kind of a neat little specimen because you've got some of them have hatched and some of them have not hatched so that's really kind of fun too. And you'll know if they're completely dried out, guys, they're no longer alive. So you can take them, the little egg casings. Oh, look at all these little sea whips. I just love these. See, this one's kind of covered in some fuzzy stuff, but this will come off. These are kind of more the sea trees. I don't really know if they're sea whips, but they're usually like more brown. But this is one, and then here's one too that like here pull this off so this one I would call like a sea tree it's not black it's brown probably is kind of a sea whip and then there's this one let me try to clean this off a little bit I really need a third hand today okay and here you go so you guys can see that one too so we will take these with us. Oh, here's another one. I love them. You guys are going to be getting some, some fun sea whips coming up. And just remember, just as a quick recap while I'm thinking about it, there are certain things that you cannot take from the beach, right? 
So obviously live shells. So anything alive, you cannot take. Um, you also cannot take bird feathers. I know that that sounds kind of ridiculous because you're like, it's just a feather, but the feathers from birds um, are protected by the Migratory Bird Act and you cannot, you cannot keep a feather and it's actually a felony if you're caught. So if you find a feather, like I had found, oh, I can't remember what episode it was in, but I found a, um, a pink feather from a uh, spoonbill and guys, you can't take it. Like I know that you want to and it's so cool, but take a photo of it and like frame your picture because you do not want to be caught with a protected um, part of a, a part of a protected animal. The same goes for uh, sea turtles. So you cannot take sea turtle eggs, even if they have had, well, obviously you can't take eggs, but the egg casing, the egg shells, once they hatch, um, you cannot take them. So they are still considered a part of a sea turtle. And sometimes um, when we get like high tides and the, the nests wash up, um, or wash out rather, um, you might find some pieces of eggshell and you cannot take it. So just be, just be aware that just because you find something on the beach, it doesn't automatically mean that you can take it with you. So keep that in mind. And um, when in doubt, you know, ask someone or if you don't have anybody to ask, you know, take a picture. Uh, I always say like, especially if you're not sure if a, a sand dollar is alive or a starfish is alive or a seashell is like, you're just not sure, take a picture of it, put it back. And I promise you, like you'll, you'll be blessed with finding something even more amazing, but always, always, you know, do yourself a favor as well and give the critter benefit of the doubt. Um, if you're not sure about something, ask. That's a pretty one in purple. Here's another one. It is a little chilly out here. Let's see if I can get this off here without damaging the... So this one's a pretty little purple one too. So sometimes, you guys see how like this one's kind of broken right here? Sometimes if I know it's going to break off, I'll just break it off so I don't have to worry about it. Because I know it's gonna break anyway, so. Here's a really big scallop right here. Let's see, this big scallop. Oh my gosh, I hope you guys enjoyed this really fun episode here on the Virtual Shelling Network, checking out this wash up with all of these crazy cockle shells. I mean, they're just everywhere. Um, and finding some really cool beach treasures along the way. I am Laura Manson signing off from Algiers Beach here on Sanibel Island. You'll get a little view of the uh, sunset. If you guys have any questions, comments, or requests, please don't hesitate to email me directly at virtualshelling at gmail.com. As always, I truly appreciate your support. If you're new to the Virtual Shelling Network, please be sure to comment below so I can welcome you. And be sure to click subscribe so you never miss a video. Thank you guys so much again. I wish you a sheltastic evening and I will see you guys again soon. Bye.